1555, you looked out the window from the Tower of London, from his room, his prison. And perhaps he was trembling over what would happen the next day. But I'm guessing he was also remembering all those events that brought him to that point. You see, he bitterly opposed the teachings of Martin Luther and the Reformation when that began to rise up in Germany and over in Europe. He preached very hard sermons against Reformation doctrine. And he was a staunch supporter of Henry VIII. And Henry appointed him the Bishop of Worcester in 1535. However, the scholar Thomas Bilby had been convinced that Luther was right. And so Thomas took him aside and said, look, let me explain this to you. Let's have a conversation. And through that conversation, he realized that, yes, Luther was right, and he needed to support the teachings of the Reformation. So he began to preach in support of the doctrines taught during the Reformation. And in 1539, King Henry VIII put forward the Six Articles Act, which basically affirmed the basic tenets of the Roman Catholic faith. Henry loved the Roman Catholic faith. He just didn't like having the Pope over the top of it. And when he passed those articles, that act, Hugh Latimer realized that he could not support Henry VIII, and he resigned as bishop. And he stopped preaching. And Henry imprisoned him in the Tower of London in 1546. However, when Henry died and King Edward VI took the throne, Hugh Latimer was released. And for a time lived as a free man. But Edward's reign did not last long. And when Mary became queen, she swept away all the Reformation work that had preceded and reinstituted Roman Catholic faith in England. And she sought out and imprisoned all those who were still supporting the Reformation faith. And so you. Hugh Latimer, along with his friend Nicholas Ridley, were imprisoned again in the Tower of London. And on October 16, 1555, he and Nicholas were tied back to back to a stake and burned for their faith. Before the fire was set, Nicholas's brother in law tried to help them end their lives quicker, and he tied bags of gunpowder around their necks, hoping the fire would ignite them and end their lives quickly, so their suffering would not be prolonged. But it was still a long time before they died. But here's Latimer's last words before he died. Be of good comfort, Mr. Ridley. Play the man. We shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England as I trust shall never be put out. And those words became a rallying cry for those supporting the Reformation in England. And when Mary left the throne, those words encouraged and moved the Reformation process. Another saint that I wanted to talk about was William Tyndale. So briefly, many of you know that uh, he translated the Bible into English, and he started that effort in 1522, but what you don't know is, and, and some of you know, but John Wycliffe had begun that process previously, and he, but he had to do his translating in secret because no one was supporting him. Turns out they weren't too crazy 
about William doing it in England either. And he was in prison. Uh, but he escaped and fled to Germany. And he kept translating and sending and smuggling copies of scriptures into England. It's my understanding he put them in bales of hay. I hope the cows couldn't get them first. <laughs> but he had agents waiting for them. But he was betrayed eventually and, and caught and over in Germany in 1535. And he was tied to the state on October 6, 1536. And he was strangled and then burned outside of Brussels. And his last words were, Lord, open the eyes of the king of England. But here's the irony of what happened to William Tyndale. Just a year before, now keep in mind they didn't have cell phones and the internet, so he hadn't, the word hadn't gotten back to Henry that they had arrested him and were going to execute him. So Henry gave permission in 1535 to translate the Bible into English, and he uh, appointed Miles Coverdale to do that work. So William Tyndale died when he didn't need to. As a matter of fact, Coverdale's translation of the Psalms are largely intact in our 1928 prayer. The Great Bible followed Coverdale, Coverdale's translation, and Henry had copies of the Great Bible placed into every English church. So William Tyndale's vision and desire that the King of England's eyes be opened his prayer came to pass. And later, 90% of what Tyndale did in his translation was put into the King James Version of the Bible. These saints gave their lives to the gospel. And I pray that God will give us the strength and the courage to walk as they will. something else we need to do as a church. Ushers, would you come forward?